traumatic head injury, but you're talking, aren't you? And you know, so he's still so if you guys meet him, uh, but ask him about it for those of you that have uh, people with injuries and stuff. So what that taught me, even though I've been teaching this a long time, is there's such a powerful effect of just the finger movements and it really has an effect on the brain. And so the idea, what Dr. Walker told me when I was 14, is that look, if you change your writing, you can boost your self-image. That doesn't seem near as far-fledged as it did, or me saying, Sam, if you write this silly letter, you can talk in 30 days. Mm -hmm. To me, that would seem far-fetched. Mm -hmm. and, and you'll meet this guy. And to me, that shows me that this whole idea of the brain chemistry and scientific pathways is so, so important. And so, and, and I think you'll notice, I, if you've ever heard a handwriting talk, handwriting house talk before, I'm talking about neuroscience, neuroplasticity, the brain science, it's where I come from. I want to make sure that what I teach you is accurate. I was telling you that you know there's a lot of books on the market, and handwriting is like learning a language. Uh, if you if you want to learn Spanish, you can easily go get a Spanish dictionary, and pretty sure Google will give it to you for free. So Spanish, you could get all the Spanish words you want, and you could even memorize them, but you can't speak Spanish that way. Mm -hmm. You've got to tie them together in the right mm -hmm. sequence. You got to understand which 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 is heavier and which is not. So people can get uh, the basic book or the graphic deck cards, and they're wonderful ways to start. But those people never become trainers. They never become consultants. They never make $1,400 to help somebody hire somebody because they don't know how to put them all together. And that's one reason we're here is because I want to create a community where you can have the weekly support and you can understand how to talk that language because we're essentially stringing together 141 symbols in different sequences to come up with someone that is violent and someone that is uh, aggressive or someone that would be a great salesperson. Uh, someone that would be a great front desk person. Someone who's a great front desk person has a very different personality than someone who's a great accountant. Mm -hmm. And that person has a different personality than someone who would be great at um, you know, caring for dogs. Okay, Some of them might have good self-esteem, but it's the size, it's the slant, it's so many other variables there. Because that's one of the reasons that we started again the annual conference. And so you guys are really lucky because we're having a conference next uh, month, next week actually. So I'm here Friday, so next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is our annual conference. And if you miss that one, uh, it'll be another one next year. But I don't know if it'll be in or it'll be in Tucson, or you can come to India. It's a really short, twenty-six hour flight. I really, I mean, hey, I know it's hard to clear your calendar on such short notice, but just hop a plane to India. Um, uh, but no, that, it's, it's a great thing, and we'll have some of the best teachers in the world coming here to Arizona. There is a basic sort of training on Saturday morning. So if you're sitting there thinking, I'd like to learn more about this, but I don't know, come to that one. It's $50. Just come to the little basic training. If you want to actually come to the whole thing, come. The tickets online are $800. Best can sell them to you for $395. So give you half price if you want to get those tonight. Uh, and you can sit the whole three days. Now, you won't leave certified, even though many people have taken the test and they've been studying for a while but you will leave with like a working knowledge. So kind of like a basic level one, level two of Spanish, you'll be able to look at your uh, your, your, your prince handwriting. Uh, you'll be able to look at your teller's handwriting as a banker. You'll be able to look at that. Now you can't tell if someone has a bounce check, it's a little different thing, but you could help understand which employees are sensitive. Because some employees you can be really firm with, mm -hmm. and some they're gonna cry, and some they're gonna be mad at you, some are gonna backstab you. Some have a, a desire to acquire plus laziness, which means they're more likely to steal. And so those are kind of conversations we're going to have based on what you say, hey, Bart, here's what I need. So it's a really amazing event. The other thing that's happening in Arizona is that Vesta is starting to teach uh, level one classes and then the certification classes. So some of you here will say, Bart, I would, I would love to you know, sort of become certified in this. I'd like to learn to do that. Over the next year, she'll be teaching a live class every month for the certification students, which are going through the Walker book and our videos and our DVDs. And she'll also be teaching uh, the level one course, so the introductory. And so on all those classes, if you're enrolled, you can bring a guest. So you can always bring your friend, you know, one or two times. It'll be, it'll be a really nice community. So those are the really two things. And so one of the reasons I flew out here is I don't want, I'm glad you bought a book, I do. What I want is, is uh, lifelong learners. What I want is trainers. I want people who are like, hey, you know what? That'd be a great part-time income. If I could learn how to do that, I could really improve my counseling, I can improve my, my employees. And so it's one of those skills where we're really in the process of looking for partners and looking for other mentors to sort of help us. And that's the real reason I spend the time and, and, and energy to come here, because I really want to find out who's super, super interested in, in really ongoing helping doing that. And Vesta, as we mentioned, is, is not only a certified handwriting expert, but she's uh, basically one of the first authorized trainers and will have the first campus in the U.S. 
we have them in India, and we've got amazing success. We had over 30,000 people go through the uh, programs in Bangalore, India in the last 10 years. So about uh, 6,000 of those were adults. They went through the certification program, which is like which we, we sell here and she'll be doing in this room. And about 25,000 were kids mm -hmm. age uh, 8 to 16. Mm -hmm. And they went through the Change Your Hand or Change Your Life and the Memory program. So they really, uh, they got all this evidence that these kids are making huge strides in their memory and their grades and their families. And, and it actually pulled me to tears because last time I was there, I met four generations. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, I think the 13 year old up to the granddad and the great granddad, they had all taken the course. They all mm -hmm. taken Walker's course, my mentor, with my books and my CDs, and I never met them. And they were telling me, how their life had changed and how they understand each other and they don't fight anymore. And, and it was just, I was like, I, 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 I'm just a kid that was trying not to get in trouble. Like, how did I you know, put this stone into motion? And part of it was because the guy in Bangalore, just like Vesta, started with a group of 20 people. And 10 years later, he has 30,000 people mm -hmm. because he was talking, he loved it and he saw people's life change and he had people and he had friends and he has trainers. So that is what we're building here in Arizona. And so you're really literally at the first lecture of something that's going to be really, really big and worldwide. And so I really appreciate you being here. Um, before uh, I wrap up, I want to tell you a couple things. Uh, there was a, a, a wonderful story that I want to uh, just mention uh, of something that happened here already. So this is although the first event, Vest has been analyzing Henry for a very long time. So I would love you to tell your story mm -hmm. about uh, your meeting with Vesta and sort of how you now are a huge believer in, mm -hmm. in handwriting analysis. Okay. So Monique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for being brave. Of course. Hi, everyone. Hi. Yeah, that's right here. Okay. That's right. Okay. So I'm Monique Alvarez, and I met Vesta, I don't know, a few months ago at a networking event. And we were supposed to be doing something other than uh, analyzing handwriting, but she offered to check out a few sentences, and I, of course, couldn't say no. And two things that she pointed out to me were, of course, the T-bars, and I had stopped my writing almost in the center of the page. I didn't want to go off to the margin. And so she pointed out to me, raise, raise your T-bars, and something about this is a fear of the future. And as soon as she said it, I knew she was spot on. And my husband's a fine artist and I handle the business side of what he does. And I had this idea on the edge of my brain to promote his art, but I just couldn't quite get it. And it in fact was making me anxious about the future because it was like, I know that there's a way I can do it, but I couldn't get it. But I took her advice and I just practiced my T's and everything I write, mm -hmm. I write the T up. And in fact, I only write with pencil because if I don't, I go back and erase <laughs> it and I fix it. <laughs> and so just a couple, I think it was less than two weeks after I started doing my T's, I got a phone call from a lady who I had known for years, but only through Facebook. And she said, I have an opportunity for your husband to illustrate children's books. Are you interested? And I said, yes. I signed my husband up for many things without even asking him. <laughs> <laughs> so we met the lady in Scottsdale. She was going to fund the project. And so we, we got started on this project. And it was going to be about $10,000 to illustrate these six books. And as we got going, I noticed that she was kind of raining Derek in more and more, which any artist knows that they don't really like that. And this one night I just said a simple statement and it kind of reminds me of the question uh, exercise. And I just said, I want the most freedom and the most, you know, the most beneficial outcome for everybody. And sure enough, within about another week or two, she decided that she didn't want to go through with the process. And while initially it was disappointing, I knew that there was something right around the corner. And literally three, four days later, I have two little babies. I put them to bed and I'm not a night owl, especially with two, two babies. And I got that idea. I decided to get online and I started researching art licensing. In other words, the art that you see in Pier 1 and, you know, all of these stores. How do you get that in there? And you have to dig deep because artists don't necessarily blog about this. And but I learned enough that first night to know that was what I had been looking for. Mm -hmm. That was it. And I learned about one family who was doing it and had been doing it for many years. 
and I knew I could follow their pattern. So this led to hours and hours of research. And I then found about a dozen art licensing agents and connected them with my husband's work and we're in the in communication now. And so what was going to be a $10,000 project, which was very exciting for us because any artist would be excited about that. The art licensing, you just add zeros. And it's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the nice side benefit of all of this is that I found my calling in the process of this because I married an artist, but I didn't really know the art world. It was always this kind of pretentious world out there I couldn't quite get in or get my mind around. And what clicked is that I could help other artists find ways, just like the licensing, maybe that particular thing isn't theirs, but find ways to help them sell their art so that they can be successful artists, do what they love, and that we don't lose the people who are creative in our society simply because they can't find a way to make money doing it. So I raise those tea bars and I'm definitely no longer fearful of the future. In fact, I'm excited and I no longer feel like things are out there. I feel like I'm in the flow. And so I want to thank Vesta so much for helping me get there. That's just awesome. <laughs> That's great. And, and if you haven't had a one-on-one -on -one counseling session with Vesta, I would encourage you to do that. Um, go ahead and pass these back. You guys saw this going in, but I want to just point out some of the things that we'll be doing at the shop over the next few months, and then also a little bit about the conference, which is coming next week in there. There we go. Could you pass those down?